Welcome everybody to a special investigative reporting episode of Fung Bros Food. We are joined here with Nelson Chan from Hoopin' Life. What's poppin' everybody? Also pro baller from Macau on the Macau Black Bears. You dress in like, instead of Kelly Oubre, Kali Oubre. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, all jokes aside, trends in the Asian American food world are constantly changing. Of course. Trends, they come, they go, they're in, they're out. But guess what? Today we are investigating the wavy trends for 2020. Something that's not as hype as before, Tyro ice cream. Okay. Poke is going down. So in this video today, we're not gonna focus necessarily on the trends that are going away, but we do want to shed light onto the trends that have arrived, such as hot chicken sandwiches. It's wavy. We're, we're talking about Japanese-inspired Asian bakeries. Wavy. And we're talking about taiyaki ice cream. You know, the fish waffle. Ah. Ah, yes. <laughs> First up, you guys, we gotta check out one of the hottest trends from 2019. It's still carrying over into 2020, hot chicken sandwiches. All right, you guys, make sure you watch to the end of the video because we have two questions at the end and the best answer gets an Amazon gift card. All right, you guys, round one has arrived here at Blazing Chicks. This is Mississippi style hot chicken cooked by an Asian chef from Mississippi. That's and you know, crazy. And you know what's funny is that the most popular hot chicken is the Nashville hot chicken. This is difference. Tennessee style versus Mississippi style cooked by Asians. All okay, right, let's okay. go in, man. What do we got? I, actually, I'm not gonna lie. I, I was opening up looking at these tots. Yeah, the tots. Start with the tots. <laughs> Cilantro, and some bacon and cheese and things of that nature. I smell onion, I love it. I like those tots better than a lot of other ones. They're not mm. as heavy, but it has a strong onion flavor. Next I up, that. I think we gotta go with the chicken. This is Mississippi fried chicken in the 626, guys. Nell, did you ever think you would find authentic Mississippi style hot chicken in Temple City? I would've never thought, man. Dude, guys, Mississippi hot chicken. Ah, it is dripping. Drip, drip, oh, no. Now. We didn't get the spiciest version, but I love the crust. Look how crispy that is. Mm. You guys may never see me in another video go like this. There's no meat in this. Wow, we just ate you the just skin. ate the bad. David, let me tell you this. I think I know why the crispy skin is extra tasty. It's because it's fried in peanut oil. It kind of gives it that nutty taste. Yeah. It's just like crispy and crunchy. Now, Andrew, for my money, this is better than Howlin' Ray's. Yeah. I'll take this over waiting three hours. All right. You can come in, get your chicken in three minutes. Now, what do you give it out of five, man? I don't want to set the bar too high, but I'm gonna give the chicken a 4.5 out of five. Yeah, I was gonna say 4.5 out of five, David. I don't speak too soon, I give it a five. Yeah, I knew you were gonna do that. David, we got the chicken tenders here. Now, I'm not gonna lie, judging by how much seasoning is on this, this looks like it's gonna be a little bit hotter. You see that? <laughs> no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta move on to the next item. I know you're breaking the pro basketball diet right here. I know, here. I didn't want to say it, guys. I didn't want to say it, make us feel bad, but the diet's gone out hey, the window. Hey, don't worry. When Richie films with us, he got to break keto, too. Chicken tender. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I like how it's not that dry, you know, because normally white or breast meat tend to be very dry. Here, they actually dip their tenders in chili oil right before they serve it. And I think it is the, the Asian chili oil, so it's going to give you kind of that Asian vibe right there. So you guys, we're talking about 2020 trends here. What do you think that the hot chicken sandwich have replaced in the game? Because as we know, the food world can expand, but where there is something new, usually something got crossed off the list. I think the hot chicken sandwich did kind of eat in to the market for beef burgers and beef patties in general, because people want a sandwich. They want something hot, they want something meaty, but they don't want beef. Here at Blazing Chicks, the chicken sandwiches come in five different levels. We got three of them. We got naked, medium, and blazing. I really like what they're doing here because they added some vegetables in there. I'm a big fan of the Popeye's chicken sandwich, but the Popeye's chicken sandwich has no vegetables whatsoever. Hot chicken, chicken sandwich, sandwich at Blazing Chicks. I'm normally not a fan of pickles, but the pickles actually taste really good. I'll tell you this right off the bat, I am feeling the heat. I do think some of the crust has fallen off of the chicken, but overall, the sandwich has maintained its structure, and I value that a lot. I can say this with a straight face because I'm not lying. This is my favorite chicken breast hot sandwich I've ever had. Yeah. Now, I've got to say, when it comes to chicken breast versus chicken thigh, I think that that's no, no comparison. As far as chicken breast goes, that's my favorite. If you're coming from the 626, and you think about getting Howlin' Rays and waiting three to four hours in line, just know that you're doing it for the experience. Because as far as taste and quality, you can get something very comparable here at Blazing Chicks. 
I just think to get something so close to the authentic Southern recipe here in the 626, that is a really amazing thing. You know, Andrew, I've always said I love to see the ethnic enclaves, the bubbles improve with authentic concepts outside of the bubble. In this case, it's an Asian chef who grew up in Mississippi bringing it to the Asian zone. That's so dope. I might have to see John try this because this is the type of food that you need to see somebody who weighs over 200 pounds try. I gotta see the Mr. 200 pound club try this real quick. This is the blazing chicken sandwich. That's his lifting face. When he lifts heavy weights, that's what he does. It's not that hot, but I like that it's Asian. Ah! Best chicken we ever had, man. Keep this food for me. Keep it away, try the- Keep it away. All right, next up, we are checking out a new concept that I believe is revolutionizing the Asian bakery or perhaps just the Chinese bakery world. Either or. That's a big statement. This spot is a Taiwanese bakery, but it has Japanese techniques and Japanese buns there. I feel like it's replacing the old school Chinese Cantonese style bakeries, you know, with new, more modern stuff. Like they're bringing, home. to be honest, a lot more Japanese bakery influences. And if you guys know Japan, they're super artisanal, very French inspired. I'm just saying, there's gonna be a leg up. Sun Mary Bakery. What, what? This bun is calling your name, man. The green onion bun. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? I love green onion. Can, can you cop that? Cop me one. Oh, man, I'm gonna get you. Oh, Nelson man. putting the clamps on it like he puts the clamps on a three-point shooter. I clamp in everything and everyone. All right, you guys, we have arrived at Sun Mary Bakery, AKA the 2020 evolution of all Chinese bakeries, guys. Man, this is Nell, you say that your parents and your family goes to Sun Mary all the time. My mom and sister come here every weekend just to get some bread. Delicious. You know what, immediately, Andrew, you know what I, I can't stop thinking about? You know, we're all, you know, Cantonese. I had to try yeah. their Bolo version Bao. of the Bolo Bao. Chachi Bolo Bao. I gotta say that Bolo shell it's delicious. I love the fluffiness of the bun. You are living in Potop land right now. I know, so. You are Potop type. I, I would know if this would be legit or not. All right. All right. I would say it's more of a traditional egg tart than it is to a Potop. So let's try some of their top favorites here. You enter, immediately enter. You know I'm a sucker for the Instagram eyes. Okay. Taro. Mochi oh. Taro. Yeah. Hey, because Nell's dog is named Mochi, that's why I want to And I like yeah. Taro. I like Taro and my dog named Mochi. All right, and then I have the tuna disc. All right, let's get it. Taro is really smooth. Mm. You get the chewiness from the mochi. I like it. It was good. That was good, wow. This is the tuna disc. This is a very popular one. Yo, I got to say, the disc game is strong. Yo, I yeah. pause. <laughs> I'm a fan. Taste the rainbow? <laughs> David, you're a huge matcha guy. I, I fetishize uh, Japanese culture in a silly way. How about that? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> me and Nell got matcha croissants. Two yeah. different kinds. I, think I got actually, the almond. I got the almond. Oh, matcha oh, croissants at Sun Mary Bay. The, I think the top was a dry, but the croissant inside was good. Okay, yam filling yam on the matcha roll. I've never had anything like that. I that never that had was that. my favorite of all the matchas. This is why Sun Mary Bakery has got the Chinese bakery game on lock yeah. in 2020. Sun Mary. Sun Mary gives Sun Mary. Hey, Sun Mary show love, all right? <laughs> Sun Mary show love. Sun Mary. Last but not least, let's further explore why this chain is killing the game in 2020. Now right. what you going with? Pick a bow. Any bow. Uh, Alien spaceship. I believe that was Ube. I haven't eaten a lot of Ube stuff. Very interesting, because I thought Ube was kind of similar to Taro, and I'm a fan of Taro, because Ube is like a different type of yam, right? You're a big fan of like the half chocolate dip croissant. David's you know? a chocolate guy, guys. If you guys didn't know, David likes his chocolate. Any type of chocolate. I can see why this was the number one bun of 2018. A lot of different types of feelings of chocolate you get. You First you get the hard shell, mm -hmm. then you crack open to a soft croissant, and then you hit a kind of a grainy, melted, mm. deconstructed chocolate in the middle. If you come to Sun Mary, you should definitely get that one. Let's all partake in this curry donut. Curry they, doesn't fail. Curry does not fail. They did a fail. good job. They did a good job. I see the carrots, I see onion, I see meat. It feels really light. It feels really light. 
We thought we were done. Getting our bread up, guys. We're getting and, and our bread up. The buns are so delicious. <laughs> that looks good. Oh, I'm excited. Yo, that's crazy. I've never seen a chocolate chip bow look like a chocolate chip cookie. I, I am know. excited about I, this I, one. I, I, no. All right. Oh, that was the Nutella bun. Oh, the Nutella. I gotta try that. Uh, I got the, the lava cake. Huh? <laughs> yo, tell hey, me why I thought we I was... had the little question mark pop up right. Yo, here. tell me why I thought I was like gonna be dripping lava all over my hands, but there isn't. Pretty good though. Sponge cake. Sponge cake. This is a sponge cake. It's good. Oh, Nutella. Shout out to Nutella. Ooh. <laughs> the Nutella. <laughs> Yo, you did pick this up. I did. Man, I gotta do it for old time's sake, man. Growing up, when I was a little kid, uh, my mom would take us to like the old Chinese bakery, and she always get one of these. You know why? Because it's the biggest one that fills you up. Oh. Shit. <laughs> so this is actually the brioche, which is a Chinese diversion of a French bread. Uh, not what I used to eat, you know, when I was a little kid. Um, but hey. Yeah, this, this, it... this is not Evan Fournier's version of brioche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is. Uh... Evan Foshan's version Evan of Evan Foshan. Is it better than the one you grew up eating, Nelson? Tell us, Nelson. This is good, but I gotta right, stick it right, with the old time. Right. Like, a like old time sake. Cold time. Sun Mary is the number one Chinese bakery in 2020. Okay. As of right now. It's winning because it has so much variety of, you know, new innovative type bakery buns. Yes. A lot of them do taste very different and unique and interesting, but a lot of them are really good too. So I think you know that really helps them, you know, put themselves above the others. Yeah, like you would, rather, you would rather have the kids come eat, you know, bakery than go get fast food bread. Yeah, you know? yeah, burgers, and, and burgers and stuff like that. I mean, I think for spreading Chinese bakery culture and everything and how they pull it off, four out of five. Man. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. We're still doing this? We're still doing this? We're still doing this? What? Guys, we're talking about food trends, Asian dessert trends, a changing of the guard. We gotta talk about Thai rolled ice cream. Okay, so Thai rolled ice cream, there's still some spots that are around, but for the most part, a lot of them close down. In basketball terms, the original big man, they're not playing big ball no more, they're going small ball. Everyone's trying to shoot threes now, they're trying to change up their game. But in replacement of Thai rolled ice cream, you could say that Thai yaki got really big. Thai yaki being the Japanese fish waffles filled with ice cream. This spot, Somi Somi, mixes it with Korean soft serve, so it's a little bit of a hybrid. Japanese taiyaki, Korean soft serve. This brand is blowing up in LA, but I know that taiyaki around the nation is big. Somi Somi, let's check it out. Andrew, the taiyaki craze is sweeping across the country. Somi Somi is a little bit interesting because they have a Korean soft serve inside of a Japanese taiyaki. All right, let's try it. No, have you ever had this before? I have not. I mean, we have to be honest. They didn't let At Somi Somi, they would, did not let us film, and they, I believe they thought that we were going to copy their recipe. <laughs> they, they they don't worry, recipe. don't they worry, Somi Somi. They were Somi Somi. You got enough locations. <laughs> we're not there to compete. Huh. Here, we have this taiyaki. Mm. Okay, the Korean soft serve is very milky, not icy at all. Don't call it soft for no reason. It, it is soft. This is <laughs> matcha and Oreo. One of these is ube and milk tea. That's milk Bang tea. Guy. Yeah, it tastes like milk tea. Let's try the milk tea. It does, it does right? Yeah, it does. It does. Mm. Even though, uh, <laughs> I have a I have a custard filling in mind. Do you think the taiyaki <laughs> fish waffle? Is gonna stick around, or is it just hype? What's your opinion? I, I think it's just hype, man. Because it's very Instagrammable. You know, people want to take pictures of it. It looks oh, really pretty. Taste-wise, yes, it does taste pretty good, the soft serve. But I think it, it's gonna go out pretty soon. On the ice cream taiyaki here at Somi Somi, what's your rating? I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Okay, so pretty good. I mean, it is a good product by it's all good. means. I'm I dead. think <laughs> unanimous decision. 3.5 out of 5. Oh, unanimous. Yeah. You unanimous means everybody. Exactly. Well, Andrew didn't give a score yet. But he told us before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 3.5. No, no, I give it 3.5. Uh, it's a good product. I do think, in my opinion, of course, I think the taiyaki, the fish wobble, has always been around. It's always going to be around on some level. Together, I don't know if it like multiplies the power, but I do think the Korean soft serve is very strong. I... Aren't you guys, I actually got one last spot. It's kind of 
not an Asian American concept, it's an Asian Asian concept. Hold on, we're going across the street. Guys, we are in our last and final spot. Like we said, this is not ASEAN Express. This is not American. Actually, if it's Western at all, it's Australian. David, why is that? Beef Noodle Soup Company, okay, in Lanjo. Okay. They're around for 100 years. Whoa. Since 1919. 1919, yeah. They go to Australia. They got 20 of them in Australia, and now they got two of them in America, and they're both in the 626. Man, Nell, yeah. you're saying ever since your pro basketball career started, you have been eating more like Lanjo Lamian, right? Yeah, I actually like Lanjo noodles a lot. Lanjo Lamian is a new thing into the beef noodle soup game. Yeah. But let me tell you this, Lanjo has a very, very long history of noodles. No pun intended. They have seven different styles of noodles. Andrew, they told me they have a different way to make every single noodle. So all that beaten and twisting, they gotta I'm learn seven pounding. different versions of that. These guys are noodle masters, man. I think we gotta start off with number one, the house special beef noodle soup. Lanjo Nuro Mien. That's that. This is the Lanjo house, house special. Yeah. Now as you can tell, unlike the Taiwanese beef noodle soup, whose broth is a lot darker and more murky, this one looks a little bit more like pho broth, or even, dare I say, no, bo -bo 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 yeah. This broth is a mixture of chicken and beef bones. You go into a lot of noodle shops, like some of the places the noodles are not good. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you want to be known as a noodle shop, you got to have really good noodles. Yeah. The noodles are fresh. Well, yeah, literally, the guy pulled them and then he turns around and drops it into the water. So there's no time for those noodles to sit around and be dry. Well, that's pretty good. It's really light. It's a lot easier to eat than Negro Mian, but I can't say that I necessarily like it better. This is our noodles from, from China. From Lanzhou. Lanzhou from Lanzhou. All handmade noodles. All the soup are made by every day. And, and all the noodles will have uh, all handmade. Is it as good as China though? <laughs> it's better than China. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, guys. There was elements of the Lanjo one I like better, but there was elements of the uh, just regular Nuro, you know, Hong Sao Nuro man I like better. Talking about the meals you've been having in China, man, because obviously you're playing pro for a Chinese basketball team. Uh, not CBA, we're talking about ABL, those are two different leagues. You get a chance to travel all around, right? It's been really hard in terms of my diet, because like when we're traveling, you gotta eat with the team. So when we were traveling up in northern China, we were eating a lot of these noodles. And I usually don't eat carbs, you know, for my diet. But, but you know, back, have an option. Yeah, back, I don't have an option, you know, when, when, when the boss manager orders whatever, they order whatever. Uh, but back home, you know, I watch my diet, I eat, you know, a lot of vegetables, a lot of greens, um, and just protein stuff, stay away from the carbs and fatty foods and candies and except today fat foods and fried stuff and except today yeah all right you guys we have arrived to the swan thai pickled beef noodle soup the medium flat. tier wide flat noodle right. just the right amount of sourness i didn't expect to like this one so much I actually like the beef too. I thought the beef slices in that one were um, super tender. Yeah, very. Do you miss all the Canto food when you're traveling, or you're like, it's all good to try new stuff? The thing about traveling is you get to experience and like, you know, dive into new cultures of like food or like anything else. I really enjoy eating like a bunch of new stuff that I never ate before. Oh, it has the thick noodles. I'm taking this one all of all of the Yo, hands down. Man, just don't fail. By the taste, just from the taste. Even though they don't got no meat. Dark. I gotta give it a five out of five, just like I gave the Mississippi fried chicken. Five out of five for me. I love this dish. No meat. You don't know meat needed. Yeah. Uh, not not to shame on the vegans, but if it had meat, I'd give it a five out of five. Oh, okay. okay. But you know, 4.5 out of five well, is still really good. First of all, we gotta say, you know, peace to which trends again. Poke, Thai rolled ice cream. Frozen yogurt. Froyo. Yeah. Things are out. What do you think? could come in. So I guess let me just say Asian chicken stews in general. Koreans have this um, spicy chicken stew. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Any any spicy chicken stew? Let me just say that. Now, what do you think is coming to 2020, man? I know you're a pro baller, but hey, you still yeah. got food to pick. Kind of bold. I know I've been eating a lot more vegetable you know, ever since going pro. And vegan pizza. Mm -hmm. I heard about it, you know, because Kyrie Irving has invested into some vegan pizza. And I think that's going to be crazy. I believe Kyrie is vegan now. Yeah, I think yeah. so. DeAndre Jordan's vegan. Yeah. Oh, vegan. I don't know. You, you I don't know. That's why I said it was bold. It was bold. I don't know if I'm gonna go vegan. If but someone told you you could you could dunk in games by going vegan, could you do it? If I could dunk in game, ten out of ten times, I'm gonna go vegan. Oh. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this video. Now. Good to see you back from always, the motherland. Man, glad to be back, you know, eating and filming with the homies, man. Always a good time, man. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. In the comment section below, if you want to win an Amazon gift card, number one, make sure you let us know what trends in the food world are going out. 
And number two, make sure you let us know which food trends are coming in and why best answers are gonna get the Amazon gift card. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that. Subscribe to Nelson Chan at Hoopin' Life. Check out all our Instagrams down below. And until next time, we are out. Peace. Okay, Yeah, from Fun Fun. We're, we're, we're checking out uh, the brand new concepts in the area, and we heard that Sun Mary is the hottest new Chinese bakery in the game. It is.